essentially, charge propagation efficiency defines all conscious and spiritual advancement, and that includes time travel. Okay. How about teleportation? Eh, similar physics. You know, that the ability to, uh, well... The TM meditators float better under gold domes because they're dielectrically phase conjugate. Right. So, and the ability to create thrust capacitively is the same physics. So moving from one place to another place, uh, you know, as possible. Have you heard of Anderson? There's a gentleman named Anderson doing work with uh, uh, slowing down time. I think I did read something about that. And it does make sense. In the same way that now we learn new physicists are puzzled because the max solar output has dramatically affected what they thought was a constant uh, a radioactive decay. But I now know why, because a phase conjugate dielectric will reduce radioactive decay. And we know why, because it's centripetal. The same reason the Ark of the Covenant was used to contain their nukes. Ah, okay. Right, right. Yeah, I think uh, Nassim mentioned something about that. Well, Nassim measured the fact that in his magnetic plasma environment, he measured the fact that it prevented a flower from decaying. I think I'd provide a better explanation of how that works, which is the field became centripetal magnetically, which is the same reason our purify and icosify accelerate metabolism. Do you have, uh, there's a lot of uh, buzz right now about the sun, about the activity on the sun and yes, stuff, should. Going on, stuff going on right now with the sun that Big is time. unusual. Big time. Do you, do, you, do you have any thoughts on that? I have a lot of thoughts on that, absolutely. I'd love to hear them. Uh, I, I mean, it's something I study, and I'm very interested in what's going on. I just don't quite get it. I suspect there's a high probability that most of the population of Earth will not survive the next few years because of the solar maximum would be my speculation. And further, the very nature of the solar compression wave is get fractal or get dead because only fractal spin sim systems do not heat during compression, and that's the absolute key. Advanced form of that is to understand that people who really have advanced plasma can not only steer tornadoes, but they can steer the solar wind. Yeah. And uh, that is the key. That is, that is it's, the key. It's the physics of what the uh, religious fundamentalist Catholics who walked out of the voting booths of Ohio, having stupidly elected George Bush, the Christian fundamentalists call the, the left behind. So how to survive the rapture. What they're yeah. calling rapture actually is the physics of charge compression. And you can survive charge compression only if you're fractal. And that's an introduction to surviving a solar wind. Right. So just for the same reason that a tornado will measurably go out of its way to destroy a metal trailer park, whereas it will visibly avoid touching a sacred stone temple, is because the metal trailer park is perceived by the living plasma as pain. Right. And that is a clue to what part of this planet is going to survive or not survive the solar wind. So if you're living in a square metal city, expect to be toast. Right. And if you're living in Prague, you're okay. You're good to go. Well, it, you, know, <laughs> it, you know, you need distance. There's metal the buildings city. there. I think. To be embedded in nature. You know, you need to be in a fractal environment. Right. Very right. clearly. Now, do you so think... That, I mean, that's an introduction to solar maxima. And my view is, I agree with NASA that countries... There will probably be many. I, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a gamble, but there's probably be many countries where when the Carrington event comes, the EMF pulse, that enough transformers go down in quite a few countries that they never recover, and NASA announced that. So right. that's a clue. That you should, need to be ready to survive for a long time a, without That problem. should be a clue. Now, also, there's been a lot of talk just, about the it, sun it, affecting it, DNA. Yes, well, but just before I conclude that, and phase conjugate dielectric can be used to survive, surround a transformer, and reduce the EMF pulse on that transformer, because phase conjugates eliminate electrosmog for the reason that they're implosively centripetal. So that would the protect them. That, I, well, it's... To a degree, it, it would protect them. Yes, to a degree. Basically, if you understand the physics of con conductivity, which is the molecular jitterbug to the icosa. It, when it's phase conjugation center, it becomes superconductive like a thread of DNA or a thread of gold. Right, right. Okay, so do you, now you think that uh, the sun uh, will affect DNA? 
Well, basically, DNA is programmed to become a gravity-making device to steer lightning, as we say, to steer tornadoes. And physics is only about tornadoes. There's nothing else in physics. String theory, wormhole, vortex. So the way living plasma steers a tornado is become centripetal and, and spin dense. And the way that happens in DNA is every time you have a little bit of bliss, and it's measurable, you do a power spectrum, EKG, EEG, the DNA mechanically responds piezoelectrically by braiding. I predicted it and Glenn Ryan measured it. The phase conjugate braiding of DNA responds to the coherent EKG. So the, the DNA absorbs the spin of its environment by centripetally becoming more phase conjugate and coherent in the braid where the long wave is superposed more and more coherently on the short wave in the mechanics of braiding in DNA. Goldenmean.info slash DNA manifesto. Lots of pictures. Anyway, so eventually, the more and more you have bliss experience okay. leading to Kundalini, your DNA becomes implosive, gravity-making. You know, Peter Gariev, he's a friend. And DNA was designed to do that. And so if you support lots more and more bliss experience, eventually your body becomes very plasma dense and you can steer things like the solar wind and you got a chance at survival. Now, do you put a date on this like the Mayans do? December 21st, 2012? I think the 2012 stuff is mostly crap. I think it's going to happen before then. <laughs> really? Before? Yeah. yeah, I think within the next year we're going to see a lot of did you see there was, a, there was a weird um, um, eruption on Venus? There's all kinds of stuff happening. The sun is, is burping all over the place. I mean, any good solar physicist is shaking in his boots right now and damn well should be. Yeah, there's a, actually a huge storm on the sun right now as we're speaking. Exactly. That, that sun is having its orgasm. And you know when the sun has an orgasm... Everything in the environment that ain't fractal gets toasted. Yeah, it's 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 pretty damaging. Uh, so you, you think that uh, the 2012 thing is just? Um, I mean, they got it it's wrong. Off. It's simple. Uh, the our, the climax events, a lot of them are going to happen next year. Really, next year. And what would yeah, they, I mean, what would those what would what would be examples of climax events? Uh, let's see. What just happened to New York City and Paris is a good introduction in London. <laughs> but but uh, what just happened? Well, you know, New York City, Paris, and London just got toasted with the worst winter thing that happened. Oh yeah, yeah, the winter. Okay. Yeah, yeah and and that, it ain't hardly begun yet. And oh. uh, I mean, you know, after this last lunar eclipse, we had how many earthquakes? A lot. And uh, that's just an introduction. Right. So you're talking earthquakes. Um... It's extreme energy-dense compression, and the earth is going to be shaken in her boots. We, sh we need a couple million people learning to have bliss of meditation and extreme focus, and we could steer that solar wind. And that's been measured. You know, when we had a million children sing at the same moment, they measured the effect on the solar flares 11 different times. Right. Okay. And what were the results? The solar flares... Are uh, get calm there. The, the, the sun gets peaceful. Okay, so that, that settles the, down. If you look at the physics, um, Bill Tiller's book "Conscious Acts of Creation," he showed that focused human attention compresses charge. He did not have a clue how that works, but he had proof that it does work. Now we need to teach how that works. Then we can understand our sun. The reason focus to human attention causes charge to compress is it's centripetal, it's fractal, it's phase right. constant. And so that's how, when, for example, when Yuri Geller measured that focus human attention reduces radioactive half-life, that's a clue to how you inhabit the sun. And the skill to do that is called Ainu or sun god, which is the meaning of Tuatha Dé Danann or Daniel or whatever. Oh, the Tuatha Dé Danann, that's uh, the Celtic. Mythology. Yeah, people of the gods. It comes from the Anunnaki story, Anu. Basically, if your ET arrives in a metal ship, they're the bad guys. If the ET arrives in a plasma made of genetic field that came through the heart of the sun, then they're worth talking to. Right, which is why. Do you think that has something to do with the fact that a lot of the uh, UFO reports are just lights and lights that can manipulate? They can change into three lights. They can get bigger. They can get smaller. They can... They can uh, they can phase. Um, yeah, I mean, I could talk at length about my point of view on ET. A lot of people are going to find that a bit shocking. 
uh, I, I prefer to kind of stick to the electrical engineering as an intro, but mm -hmm. basically there, there's at least 22 different extraterrestrial groups that have messed with our DNA here. I recommend people look at the Anton Parks material, uh, Zeitlin.net, for the history. Okay. But in my view, the history story is a short nightmare that's easy to forget once you learn the physics. <laughs> that's easy to forget. <laughs> it's actually designed to forget. Because, you think so? Yeah, because the pr pure principle makes the history irrelevant, actually. So once you learn the principle, the history story is kind of a little uh, sideshow. It's like a sideshow. Okay. So the the history is is important from a historical point of view. But other than this gentleman you mentioned, does anybody have that history? I mean, how about Zachariah Sitchin? Would you think he was oh, banging, he, banging on all? He got some of the local story right. But, for example, when he said they were, you know, mining the gold to fix the atmosphere on their home planet, you know, that's about 1% of the story. Of course, first of all, they were right. eating the gold. And second of all, the way you fix an atmosphere with gold is to do with restored phase conjugation or centripetal force. And, you know, he, so he, he got about 1% of the physics gold powder. He tried hard, but, you know, the ET part of that story is the biggest part of it, and he didn't have a clue of that. And that's why I think Anton Parks is really helpful. Anki or Sam or Nudie Mood, the cloner, he was basically, they were running from the Orion Wars. They launched from Pleiades, which is the, the aboriginal story of the origins for most cultures the Seven Sisters, and when they arrived here, basically they started to age catastrophically, so they had to build these devices that prevented aging called the Shem. I will raise a Shem unto the Lord, which became a word Shaman, Shem on, and in church it's called the altar, which means a phase conjugate dielectric capacitor, which is an electric field to prevent aging, because that was their, that was their problem. And it, it, that, it was, I wonder if it was uh, the local earth gravity that had that effect. Well, it's true. Like Harkonnen and, <laughs> and like Ariel Sharon, uh, you know, it requires an artificial environment in order to survive. Well, um, they were accustomed to making that artificial environment. And, of course, when they had to hear, come here for desperate emergency gold mining, then they, uh, you know, were shocked at how rapidly they aged. And that's where they learned how to build the Garden of Eden, which is this capacitor to prevent aging. And that's what Akhenaten was designed by the Syrians to fix the Amarna Amenti, which is a design of capacitor to allow souls to uh, re-inhabit the stars, basically, which is a, a bliss temple to accelerate human plasma back through the sun. So and basically, Akhenaten couldn't handle a checkbook and screwed up, changed his name to Moses and learned how to become a gold cup. Powder changed cook. his name to Moses, exactly. Yeah. And, and then that's the origin of the Essenes and the Jesus story. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the Moses. Uh, the, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the author who wrote a book about uh, Ahmed Osman. Exactly, what a brilliant book! House of the Messiah and Out of Egypt. Yeah, what a great book! And that's, by the way, also the origin of the Oedipus story, because Enki's father's father's father. They all killed their fathers. Huh. Yeah, they have a they have a they have a thing about killing their dads to take over power. I mean, it's it's called the Draco or Uru culture. And they had a lot of problems, and their genetic problem is our history. And we could play with that history story if you want. I don't know if you want to go into all that tonight. But I, that's why I recommend Anton Parks, Zeitlin.net, The Ages of Uras is a good start. I have it summarized at goldenmean.info slash angel science. Yeah, I mean, it's always very interesting to, to talk about that. But right now we have to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Okay. Okay, and we're back. We're talking to Dan Winter, who has a website called www.goldenmean.info. And he has many more uh, websites. Now, can you connect to all of your websites through goldenmean.info? Or do you, have, do you have separate? Well, there's a little d different focus. Of course, fractalfield.com mm -hmm. was sponsored when we launched international conferences of physicists on... Unified Field Science, and then we have Breakthrough-Technologies.com, and then we have the Purify.com, P-Y-R-A-P-H-I, which is the Space Conjugate Dielectric Technology, and then we have, uh, let's see, Fractal Field, oh, the Imploder.com, which okay. is the Implosion Technologies Applied Hydrodynamically, etc. So there's a little different focus, but there, well, there's a lot of cross-links there. Now, that one you mentioned with water, is that to do with revitalizing water and the phase con uh, conjugate uh, magnetics? Yes, exactly. Uh, the imploder.com basically takes hydrodynamic implosion combined with magnetic implosion and produces a, a centripetal device for water we call Schauberger's dream, mm 